Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Winning Cures Everything. College football week eight gambling picks. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Play that sweet music. Let it jam a little bit. Ooh, that's so good. That's so good. All right. All right. We did absolutely terrible last week. Absolutely terrible. I went two and five. I lost $236.36. Chris went 0 and four, lost $300. Gary, ask me how much I care. How much do you care? I don't give a damn because the LSU Tigers beat the hell out of the Florida Gators. <laughs> You, uh, you should have had that in your fix, man. One of the greatest nights in, in Baton long, Rouge history. In a long, long time that I had alone in my sunroom, just me and, and the windows open, beautiful weather, cool, nice, by myself, <laughs> with the TV, sent everybody else out of the house. And enjoyed it by yourself. I, you know what? I did didn't the exact care same about thing. Any, any gambling. I didn't care about it at all. I had a bunch of money out. Spread out, won some, lost some. I hit a couple money line deals. Yeah, but, but I don't, I don't do any of that on here, so it doesn't matter. Lost all of these games. That's fine. That happened. You, you know who did fine last week though? Who did it? Ben F. Ben F. From, I believe he's from Arizona. Okay, I believe that's right. Uh, actually, here I'll tell you. There you go. He is from. No, I'm sorry. He is from New Mexico. All right, out from, west. From New Mexico, out west. So he went eight and two on the weekend, and he was rolling. He was rolling, man. He did he did fine, and that was in our pick'em contest. You can join in every single week over at winningcureseverything.com. You can go find out more uh, more information about us over there. Of course, the football picks contest is up every week. It's up right now. Um, our gambling picks, our previews, our podcasts, our videos, our social media platforms, everything else. Is all right there. Go check it out, winningcureseverything.com. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Leave some comments for us, of course. If you're listening on your favorite podcast app, especially if it is Apple Podcasts, make sure you go leave us a review. We had some really good reviews this past week. Uh, I'll we go appreciate ahead appreciate those. Thank yeah, I, so here, read off, uh, read off our records for overall, and I'm going to pull up the, uh, the reviews for us. Who is this for, and what is this for? This right here, I am 23 and 34. Okay, I got you. So, Gary is, what is this? And gambling picks overall. That's our college football gambling picks overall. Gary is 23 and 34. He is down, it looks like, $17.29. Well, 17.29 units. Okay. It's way more than $17, I'll tell you that. I'm just going to let y'all know two things here. I have dyslexia, and Gary's handwriting is really bad. It's, It's tiny. So. Very tiny. Small, I can read. I got good eyesight. <laughs> My record, I believe this is 18 and 20 and 1, which I don't care about the push. Irrelevant. And I'm down 4.95 units. I wish I was only down $4.95. Believe that. That would believe be that. way better, by the way. Oh, I, I could agree with for that. For those who understand how math works. That's a, You know, here we go. Here we go. All right, so... It's not it's, easy to do the reviews on the phone. No, it's really I, This not. is the worst part about Apple reviews is it's really hard, and I got a lot of static and feedback. Yeah, me too. I don't know what's up with that. Um, it's, it's from my mic and my voice. I just I just bring this out. Apparently um, so. I hate that if I could get Apple to do anything, it's make it easy to leave a review on the phone. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Burl Cat. A couple of weeks ago said, these guys know their stuff. No, they don't win every game or even claim that. That is true. They are real dudes with exceptional football knowledge. Chris goes on, or goes on a passionate rant about something at least once an episode, and Gary keeps it middle of the road. Both are needed to make this podcast enjoyable. I appreciate that. And then Crosby22 said, great, easy listening. I've been with you guys since 2017. Get on and listen. Whatever Gary says, go opposite. LOL. Great show, fellas. Take his shots. I love it. Hey, I, I can't blame him right now. That's no, all right. I can't blame him right now Listen, because we can take we we take it better than most. I I, know. Oh, look, this has just been a bad year. It's been a bad year, but that's okay because I'm getting off the snide today, my friends. Okay. This week, it is week eight. 
I'm feeling good. Better than I have in a long time. I feel all right. That's the difference between you and I. Yeah. Let, let, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you, I don't feel as good. All right. I don't feel as good. All right. Um, I'm going to go. Do you want to? Hey, you've got more than oh, I do. You I, go on so, start. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to preface this, and this will carry over to the NFL one. Probably not going to do a preface there. But <clears throat> I'm not trying to complain. I'm just telling you the state of mind I'm in and what I have. All right? So I'm, I'm doped up on a whole lot of cold meds, flu meds, those types of things. And I've been, instead of resting, working like a champ every day. And, uh, and I'm, I'm a little bit exhausted. Today at noon for my lunch break, I sat down. So I'm going to look at some lines. And I just asked a young lady for a pen that was waiting on me and a piece of paper. She handed it to me, and I wrote down every game I liked. Don't question it. Didn't think about it. I like this, like this, I like this, I like this, I like this. Done. Y'all have watched me do this for years and years and years. I've never bet more than six games at a time. I think last year Gary made us pick seven college football games. I argue with him all the time about it. I have eight. (laughs) I wrote down eight. And I said, well, I don't. This is this is not normal. In the NFL, you know how much I'm allergic to chalk. Yeah. And I like dogs. I don't have a single dog. This is the most non like me games. So it's either gonna be great, and if it's great, then I just need to just dope myself up on on meds all the time and uh and just don't sleep. And uh, I should do a lot better. So yes, I will yeah. start. And I will start with a weeknight game. Is this Thursday or it's it's Thursday. It's Wednesday. God. These Wednesday games are going to ruin. Like, I'm going to lose half my stuff, not from gambling, because my (laughs) my wife's going to leave me. But I'm going to watch this one. UCLA-Stanford. That that is a Thursday night game. It says Wednesday. Oh, it says Thursday underneath. Thursday. Yeah, that's Thursday night game. Guys. (laughs) This is is bad. I'm going to roll through them real quick then. I'm just starting. UCLA. Catching, I was catching plus eight at lunchtime. It's plus six and a half now. It's a big difference right now. I don't care. I, I've just made up my mind that almost every underdog in the Pac-12, I'm just going to bet on. I'm just going to bet every underdog in the Pac-12, Gary. Because are you are you betting money line? Or are you betting no? What not in the gambling picks? I'm taking the points. Okay. So what I actually do in real life might be you, you, know, you take an harder. eight or six and a half. I'm going to take six and a half because that's what it is. That's how I, I always, just, whatever I can get it at right now, it's now at seven. It's so weird. Uh, six and a half minus 110, I'm going to take it. I don't care. Okay. Six and a half. I think UCLA's got a good chance to win this game. I think they're trying to get things turned around. And I'm going to tell you this. Stanford's rolled off a couple of wins. They're not, they're not impressing anybody. No. And it's the Pac-12, guys. Does True. anybody really think anybody knows what the hell's going on out there? No. Not in the slightest. Take all the dogs. You're fine. What do you do? Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. I'm, all of these are just standard fifty dollars. I, I can get down with 110. it. One ten. I can get down with it. All right. So I'll be a lot quicker after that. For me, game number one, Duke, three and a half point underdog at Virginia. Look, I understand where you're coming from, right? Virginia has beaten Duke four straight times. They've covered against them three out of the four. I didn't know that. Like they, yeah. I, you all you of, taught me something. I appreciate it. And it's, oh, Virginia has got such a great run defense. And that's what Duke does is they run the football and da 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 I don't care. I don't care about any of these stats. I don't care about any of this stuff. Duke is 13-3 and three against the spread, 12-4 and four straight up as an underdog of less than a touchdown under David Cutcliffe. I don't think that ends here. That seems pretty good. I like Duke plus three and a half here. Give me that all day. 50 bucks at minus 110. I'm going to the Big Ten. And I'm... We have rules. We bet against bad teams. Yes, we do. I'm going against a bad team, and I'm going with who I believe. I don't care about all these other rankings. My belief is it's the second best team in the country. I'm going with Wisconsin. Minus 25 and a half is what I found. Let me make sure it's still close to that. I, I thought it was like 30. 31? How the hell it lunch? How the hell did it jump seven points? I'll take the 31. Care? Care? <laughs> Told you. I'm out of my mind tonight. I told you, man. Is, this, is, is this at Illinois? It's at Illinois. On the road. It don't matter. They have shut everybody. This, guess what? This is going to be one of those games where another team does not score. Another team's not going to score. 
Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks at minus one ten. I, I was gonna put more on it until I saw it jump seven points yeah. in, <laughs> in, in 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 like seven hours. So it's like a point an hour. By the time game time gets here, it's gonna get rough. Yeah, it'll be forty nine by. Wisconsin's gonna kill them. I think you're right. I think you're right. How many points is Illinois gonna score? Uh, I'd say like ten. If I could, if I could find a place that I could bet team total, I'd I'd say they guarantee. Please tell me it's like seven. I'd they say don't. they do. Uh, probably not, they but uh, they yeah, they do. Get it, uh, I'd I'd bet Keep Illinois talking. scores probably ten because I mean, Wisconsin's got Ohio State next week. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, you're crazy. You're crazy. Oh uh, man, Gary, I'm sorry. I you can't can't get Wisconsin. Oh, I don't want Wisconsin. Right now. You want Illinois? They ain't, they ain't got that either. Do they? Illinois team total. It's the line. Yeah, that's, oh, that's, that's the line. They ain't got that thing, do they? Total points scored by Illinois, over under is 10. 10. Hey, man, I was dead on that number. You that's, a, that's all right. You should do this for a living. I'm that's sorry. A, this is boring radio. <laughs> I don't know Keep about going. all that. All right, let's roll on. Game number two for me, Arizona State. I got them at 14. What is it, 13 and a half? I saw it at 13 and a half. I, but I also I saw it on two places, 13 and a half, and I saw it at 14 and a half. So you can. I'm just gonna take the 14. I was about to say I'm you just can the find a good number. At, at 14, Utah. I'm betting a hundred dollars at minus 110. Arizona State plus 14. Here's the deal: Herm Edwards, 12 and seven straight up at Arizona State the last two seasons. Of those seven losses, only one was by more than a touchdown, and that was an 11 point loss to Fresno State in the Las Vegas Bowl when they were sitting guys, people didn't care about playing, whatever. Arizona State beat Utah last year 38-20. to Utah 0-3 against the spread, their last three at home as a double-digit favorite. I like Arizona State here. I don't know that they win the game. I don't need them to win the game. I just need them to cover 14. So I'm doing 100 at minus 110, Arizona State plus 14. Who you got next? So you see what Gary said. This, what is this? Is it a Pac-12 game? Pac-12 game. What'd I say? I bet on all the all Take the dogs. all the dogs in the Pac-12, guys. This is, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just because. Do we know what the Pac-12 is? No. Do you know? Because you don't. I don't. I sure as hell don't know what's no. going on in Pac-12. But I know this: underdogs are covering like crazy. That's true. Now that I'm not true. all of my gambling picks are not all the underdogs, but a lot of them are the. A lot of more. underdogs in the Pac-12. Uh, what are you doing? Fifty bucks. 50, I'm gonna do fifty. I'm fifty uh, across 50 the board. Across the board. Just easy for me, man. That makes I sense. can't be thinking too much tonight. I can understand that. It's too hard. I can understand that. Let's jump into the next one. Boise State. This is game number three for me. Boise State minus six and a half at BYU. Both teams using backup quarterbacks right now. We don't know what's going on with our boy Hank yet. Not yet. But I would assume he's probably out. But that's okay. That's going to be tough. Because this other guy, uh, Chase Cord, like he came in, he threw three touchdowns, 175 yards. He looked just fine against Hawaii last week. Now, don't get me wrong. BYU and Hawaii. Slightly different teams. Slightly different. And the fact that they're going on the road to Provo, that's that's kind of a tough deal. But look, BYU, while while Boise does like to fling it, they can also run the football. BYU, the number 114 rushing defense in the country. BYU is minus six average against the spread this year. Boise is plus three average against the spread. I like Boise. BYU started off crazy high. And, and I think they just got worn down. That schedule and I, was yeah, rough. It was rough early. Losing to South Florida last week, man, that's a... Oh, yeah. Well, and they bad. had to go on the road and then come back. That's right. And while... But they've been doing that all year. Exactly. I, I think... And they hadn't had a bye yet. They... No, you're right. It's, they, it's, t- it's a tough, their schedule, tough play. Their schedule is, without being in a big mega conference, their schedule is crazy. And, and without Zach Wilson at quarterback, that team is in trouble. They're just in a, a what are you whole doing mess. With I interrupted you. I apologize. No, it's all good. Boise State minus six and a half at BYU. Fifty bucks at minus one ten for me. Who you got next? Now this is this is a Pac twelve game. I'm taking the dog, but I actually actually have a little a little philosophy that I just like. Okay, it's it's a it's a thing that I like to bet on. Whenever a team is coming off a brutal brutal loss, bad loss, not a okay. good not a good game. And I like playing against a team that's coming off a good win. When that matchup happens, I like taking the dog because everybody's thinking high on this guy. 
and bat on this guy, right? Okay. Well, well, this guy didn't win, but they were on national TV and they played really, really well. I like Arizona plus nine and a half at USC. That's it. Pac-12. I'm taking a dog. Pac-12. And, and I can't tell you that Arizona is that much worse than USC, but USC should win this game. I don't know that they will. But nine and a half points, I don't know that there's anybody in the Pac-12 that I would lay nine and a half points to with USC. Is anybody that level bad? I would say Oregon State. Man, I would too, but I don't but, know. But Oregon State's offense has been pretty good. They can, they can score, right? Yeah. Nobody's like holding Oregon State to nothing. I, I, it's just, I might be wrong on this. Might be wrong on a lot of these. But I, I, thought, I thought nine and a half points, they shouldn't be. And let me double check this because these numbers have been... Way different since lunchtime. Now it's 10. I'm, I'm going to take the 10. Since, I, the since 10 I gave down. the bad numbers earlier, I'll take one good number for myself. Arizona plus 10 at fair, USC. As long as I'm consistent. 50 yeah. bucks at minus 110. Oh. Okay. Okay. Come on, Wildcats. Give me one. Let's, uh, let's jump into my fourth game. And I've got seven. I'm going with Central Michigan. Okay. Minus 11 and a half. At Bowling Green. They were in a money line parlay with me a couple of weeks ago. Bowling Green? Bowling Green coming off of a massive, massive home win. Rivalry game against Toledo. (laughs) Bowling Green was like plus 1,400 to win that game. Yeah. They were 27-point underdogs. Yes. At home. That's why they were like plus 1,400 to win that game. Did you see how they won the game, though? No, I don't. Did I see how they won the game? I I was just I didn't know they played the game until somebody in our text thread said... What was the money line on Bowling Green? Yeah. Um, I had to go Google it. Fumbled punts. Just fumbles and turnovers. That's how they're going to win games. Okay. Short fields. That's the only way they're going to win. Toledo's quarterback got hurt. Any all number of, of different things. All of those things have to happen to make that Bowling happen. Green, even after that win, the number 112 defense as far as yards per carry goes for rushing. They're, they're really bad at football. Central Michigan is number 50 in the country in yards per rush. That is how they get their their stuff going. Central Michigan wins this by at least two touchdowns. Put $75 down at minus 110 on Central Michigan, minus 11 and a half. Who you got next? I'm betting against a coach I don't like betting against. I'm leaving the Pac-12 because I really love this other guy. I really love this other guy. Give me the Baylor Bears plus three and a half going to Oklahoma State. Plus three and a half? Plus three and a half. Hang on, let me check out that number. Plus three now. All right. I'll take oh, but it's three. but it's even money. Even I, I get I get less juice. Save me save me some on the juice here. That's plus nice. three. I lose half point. Plus one. This team is undefeated. And they are playing in crazy wild football games. A, if you're wanting just to guess what will be a good game to watch, find this game. It's yeah. going to be on FS1 or, or, or ESPN or, or Fox. You always have to, to where the channels are if you can find them. Oh, yeah, but I, can, I can find it. This is going to be an incredible game. Gundy, two weeks to prepare for this Baylor team. All right, Had the bye week last week. That team has had some ups. That team's had some downs. They haven't played a defense like this Baylor Bears, the Matt Rule. And Brewer, Brewer is making a case for – why? It's on Fox. Big on, Fox. Oh, the Big Fox. 3 p.m. Because you know why? Because they know dummies. Nope. They know Baylor, if you want great close football games, yeah. you put the Baylor games on because all of them are exciting. But you know what happens when you got close games? You don't win a whole lot of those by, That's true. by seven points. You, three, I'm catching three, and I got what I think is the better football team. Now, I do think that some point in time they're going to lose. I don't think they're going to stay undefeated for long, but – I'm going to ride him one more time. I can get down with it. I can get down with it. That's good stuff. Good stuff. I All love right. Matt Rule. Game number five for me. And I'm putting a lot of money on this one. Ooh, I like when you do this. Iowa do State. At all. Iowa State is a seven-point favorite at doing, Texas Tech. Are we doing this? You do the same thing. Oh, are we going head to head? Are we doing this? <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I got $150. On Iowa State. On Iowa State. All Iowa right. State. On the road. The number 11 passing offense in the country against Texas Tech, who is the number 94 passing defense. Iowa State has one 
and covered three straight against Texas Tech, and they have been blowing Texas Tech out every None year. None of those Texas Tech teams are going to look like this team. Texas Tech coming off of a two-overtime loss at Baylor. I understand Iowa State went on the road and whooped up on West Virginia last week. I'm telling you, there's something about this Iowa State team, their yards per play differential, everything about this team is different. And don't forget, you, you know what month we're in, right? We're in October. That would be incorrect. We are in Brocktober, my friend. <laughs> oh, I was hoping you would say October. Brocktober, baby. Iowa State minus seven at Texas Tech. I'm putting 150 bucks down at minus 110. Let's go. Texas Tech defense is substantially better. Texas Tech's defense sucks. That defense is is terrible. I'm that, telling they're you. Not, they're not terrible. Randy, I know you're watching this. They're Our boy terrible. from Lubbock. They're just not. I'm telling you. I'm going to tell you the exactly. The stats will tell you that no, that team is No, but see, stats not. lie. This is, why, this is why I don't like analytics. That's fine. All the time. That's why you can't marry yourself to them, because I watch these games. And against Baylor, a good football team, an undefeated football team, a team that beat Iowa State, okay, against Baylor, it took Charlie the, Brewer throwing three interceptions in that ball game. But that's because their defense took the ball away three times. A and B. The reason the defense began to crumble is because th- those games are so physical and they're so hard. This Baylor team beats you up physically early and early, and, and, and the game goes later and later, and then your defense begins to hurt and to fall apart. Iowa State is not a we're going to beat you up physically team. They're just a different style. They're Big Twelve football. Okay. Okay. I like I like Texas Tech. I like a home dog catching a, a, a touchdown here. I saw this team go toe to toe with the Baylor Bears, and I think Baylor's a better football team than Iowa State. And they are by by two points at home. No sir, no sir, <laughs> no sir. That's just how that game finished. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm with they're you. Be, they're a better football team. Uh, Brewers okay. a better quarterback than Brock. Oh, I don't know about that. Not not in Brocktober, my friend. Not in Brocktober. All right. Next up for me, game number six. I can't believe it's going to be six. Hey, that happens sometimes, man. North Carolina, minus three and a half at Virginia Tech. Justin Fuentes, boys. Two and seven against the spread. Their last nine against ACC competition. Look, at Miami, they covered. Miami had to give them the ball four times. You never, you never give the defense credit for taking those four away. You notice that? This is a <laughs> this is a pattern here of just the quarterback just gave it to him. And then last year, a very fluky Virginia game where Virginia Tech wins. I I ain't even studying you right now. <laughs> just I just like giving credit to people who do a good job. Turnover margin here. North Carolina number fifty six in the country. Virginia Tech number one hundred seven. I trust Sam Howell more than I trust anybody on Virginia Tech's football team. This team has major, major problems. I love North Carolina in this spot. Minus three and a half, it, it, I'm trusting my eyeballs. That's that's what I'm doing here. Um, what is it? Minus 105? Yeah, you can get 105. I'll take 105. Give me 105. I wish I could have found a, a three. But some of the ones I saw earlier were actually fours. No, they're probably going the other way. I'm gonna bet. I'm gonna bet North Carolina's gonna get a big favor this week. Yeah, a lot of people gonna be on them. So fifty bucks at minus one hundred and five. North Carolina minus three and a half. The fighting Mac Browns doing what they do. Justin Fuente, you need to get your ish together, player. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, he's he's in some mad trouble right now, man. He's, gonna be, he's gonna be looking for. One of those G5 jobs. That's next a, and year. We thought that he was the golden child. Yeah, what we, he did, we thought what he that, did at Memphis was pretty damn special. Oh, yeah. Well, everybody thought that it was the perfect transition. He yes. fits Blacksburg so well. And da, da, da. look, Blacksburg ain't scary to go into anymore. It's just not. Like, I don't know what's going on there, but uh, until they prove me wrong, like, I'm all over. I'm all over North Carolina going there. Who you got? Four weeks in a row. I don't even know if I covered. I didn't cover this game because I didn't win any games last week. <laughs> <laughs> That's this is why when you go over, it makes things remember it easier. It, it makes it easier when you're right? when you're not all in your in your head together. Four weeks in a row, I bet against Penn State. That's a problem. I'm gonna make it five. Oh my god! <laughs> Give me the Michigan Wolverines going into the whiteout. 
Oh, God. Wait, I, saw it at, I saw it at plus nine earlier, and then I just saw it at eight and a half. I'll take the eight and a half. That's fine. Michigan plus eight and a half. They're going to make this a, a one-score game. Michigan's going to have some pride about themselves, and they're going to compete to win this football game. I don't think that's a terrible bet. Like I don't, I don't think that's bad at all. So I think I've covered one. I've pushed one and lost two. One, yeah. of them, one of them I lost was the Maryland game. That ain't my fault. That's Maryland just a, and I'm very much in taking personal responsibility. Now that's Loxley just being just a dog, coach. Just a dog. Yeah. Just a fraud. Not a dog. A fraud. A fraud, coach. Yes. All right. Last one for me. Let's uh let's do this thing up. Let's let's oh, let's give on. out a big number. Okay. Missouri. Oh, I forgot all about this game. Missouri going on the road to Nashville. Giving up 21 points. Now, you can find a different spot. There's 21 and a half. There's 21. I'm taking the better number. Uh, if you get it 21 and a half, buy that thing back down. Like, just do yourself the favor. Yeah, buy don't, the don't get hooked. You can get 21. There you go. I all see right. 21 right here. Minus good, 110. good, good. So, do yourself the favor. Do not get caught by the hook. I've been caught by the hook so many damn times this year. I'm tired of it. I don't want to deal with it anymore. Missouri minus 21 at Vandy. Look. Vandy 0-6 against the spread this year. This team looks like they have quit. Who went in there and beat the crap out of them last week? UNLV That's beat what I them 34 to 10 in Nashville last week. That's what I thought. That's Vanderbilt only put up 10 points at home. That's bad. Against football. UNLV. That's a bad football. Missouri is 7 to 3 against the spread in their last 10 games. Their yards per point margin, Missouri is number 31 in the country. Vandy is number 118. Defensive yards per play, Missouri number 12. They don't give up nothing. Vanderbilt is number 126. Well, Vanderbilt not couldn't, on anybody. Vandy couldn't stop a sneeze, man. Yeah, man, yeah, man. That's, this Vanderbilt team is maybe the worst that I have seen in 15, 20 years. They've gotten worse over the season, though. Yes. They started off not terrible. Yeah, I mean, they, they weren't they were bad. Com- they played they a were difficult com- schedule. Yes, they were competitive early. But, man. They just died. Yeah. Last, so, I think so it might have happened last I had, week. I had three games written down that I actually did X off. That's one of them. Oh, I'm doing $75 at minus 110 on that one. My last game. All right. We are going to this game. Yeah, we are. Friday night. We're going to the home team catching 28 points. Against Ohio State, the Buckeyes. Many people in the country have this as the number one team in the country. They say they're the most complete team in the country. I say Ohio State hadn't played nobody yet. And this is the best defense they're going to play. This defense stymied Wisconsin, and it's going to stymie Ohio State. Don't know if they're going to win. But 28 points is but a lot. But you give me four touchdown head start. At and home. I say, if you don't score four touchdowns, then I feel great. I can't lose, right? That's that's a good point. That's how math works, Greg. I mean, they, you think they're going to hold Ohio State to less than four touchdowns? I could see 35 to 10, 35 to 13. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. that, that I that. thought you were saying they were going to hold their offense to. But I'm just to, saying, thir- I, I don't see them scoring more than 35. I see them scoring around the 35 number. And that defense of Ohio State is good. They're not, they're not world beaters. Northwestern's had two weeks to prepare for this game. But uh, I know Ohio State is has. the line up to 28 and a half now? I doubt it. It's been at 28 pretty strong all week. 28 on there. Okay, yeah. I say all week. There's, there's, Tuesday. there's other places you can get at 28 and a half. Probably. And so, but I'm okay. I'm okay. I, I got, I got, I, I'm, I'm, I'm riding with the home team. I'm ri- I've tried to make Northwestern a thing all year. I've tried so hard. You know who else I've tried to make a thing? South Carolina. And, and you, and and you should have had them last week. And guess what? I, 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 I did have not on here, but that's, it's okay. Yeah. That, that game worked out very, very well for me. I'm going to have a little bit of that on this game. Just a, just a touch. Just a touch. Sprinkle a little bit on that money line action. Plus 2,500. Good gracious. 2,500? Plus 2,500. Good gracious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's going to wrap it up. That's why for, it's called gambling. Yeah, that's going to wrap it up for the college football gambling picks. Of course, we have not done very well, but you can keep track of every single bet. We don't hide from them. We'll tell you exactly what we've done all season long. You can go find the spreadsheets over at winningcureseverything.com. Just click on gambling picks up in the navigation bar over there. But right now, to help us out with a few picks, 
we're going to bring in our buddy, Mr. T.J. Reeves from the Third Dog Thursday podcast. All right, we've got Mr. T.J. Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast in with us. You can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guide. T.J., you're back from across the pond. How you feeling, man? Everything doing okay? All right, so I'm a little jet lag. You know, last week I was joining you after playoff baseball. You were you were recording with me immediately after the Absolutely. Rays were battling the Houston Astros, and it didn't work out for the Rays ultimately in the baseball. Now. Seven days later, I have come back to the continent here of North America just to be on Winning Cures here. You were checking with me earlier about whether I was going to be available for the podcast because of jet lag, uh, time zone displacement. And I said to you, I went three for three on Three Dog Thursday. <laughs> I got to come on the show. If I'm 0-3, then I'm still in witness protection. I'd act like I was still in Europe uh, and would not come on the show. But I was three for three yes, last week. I got to post. I got to show up. Yes, you were. You were knocking them out of the park last week. Very nicely done, of course. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, with college football here. Yes. Man, uh, let, let's talk about the biggest game of the weekend first. And then I'm going to get a, a few leans from you, if you don't mind. Sure. The whiteout up in Happy Valley. Look, Penn State giving up nine points to Michigan. It seems like a ton of points. Uh, but, of course, we've talked multiple times this year about Harbaugh as an underdog. He does not do well uh, in that spot on the road. Like The home team has blown out the away team the last three years. Uh, how do you feel about this? Is, is nine too many here? That's a great question, and you guys were on to it earlier in the year about Harbaugh as the road underdog being uh, less than stellar, and of course, Wisconsin whacked them earlier in the year. Now, I, I got, it's a true confession time on winning cures. Giannini, you want a little true confession oh, here on the safe, show? This is safe right. space. Let's, let's, let's do a little true confession that I'm in Europe and I'm not able to watch a whole lot of college football because they've got everything blocked on the internet from being able to watch. You go to the pubs and the sports bars and they're showing the World Cup of Rugby Saturday afternoon. <laughs> with, I kid you not, I exaggerate you not, with, with uh, Scotland playing Samoa in rugby on in all the pubs with everybody hanging on every play of this rugby game. So I was not able to see a lot live. I have since seen some highlights, some recaps, but Michigan obviously struggled to put Illinois away at home. So that, that makes me even less inclined to take the points here with Penn State, who's been really good, guys. That's my point. Well, I, and I'll tell you this. Um, they were, so against Illinois, they were up 28 to nothing in that game. I believe. Right. Yes. Right. And, and Illinois comes back, makes it 28-25, and then, you know, Michigan puts the final two touchdowns on the board. I, I wonder if maybe part of this was looking ahead. I'm, I'm guessing maybe. Yeah, I didn't watch any of this, so I couldn't speak to did they pull a bunch of guys and just kind of let the starters get out and get healthy um, or, or, or kind of how Illinois came back on them. I, I, I don't know. They had a couple of bad turnovers, I know that, and Illinois is not very good. No, they're not. Uh, and there were eyebrows being raised everywhere, and yes, they put the game away, uh, but I agree with you guys. I mean, what, what does this really mean when you're going on the road in a hostile environment, 100,000 Penn State's feeling it? They've been in this spot a couple of times before with James Franklin and not won the game. So are they due right now to get the big win over Michigan and set them up for later in the year? Michigan, uh, well, Penn State loves the revenge spot, and Michigan beat them forty-two to seven last year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, this this could definitely be one of those where they are amped up for it. I, I was wondering if maybe they would look past Iowa. I don't know that they did that, uh, but man, like th this is definitely going to be one hell of a football game. Let's uh, let's talk about some of your leans here. Uh, at, at, so we'll lead into one that I'm, I'm super curious about. South Florida, as an underdog <laughs> last week, at, at, look, right in your backyard, they, uh, they right. get the win last week against BYU, and they look fairly decent. They've got two wins in a row now over FBS teams, which they had lost, what, 10 straight to FBS teams? Right. So, Charlie Strong may be getting this thing turned around. They, they got the right quarterback now. Tell me, tell me what, you're, uh, what you're feeling here. Okay, so at the risk of Chris in particular saying, do you dare, do you dare go back to the USF Bulls after I took them at the beginning of the year against Wisconsin? And how did that work out, by the way, on the opening weekend of the season? I think it was Wisconsin. 
yeah, 49 USF, nothing and embarrassing. And they also got embarrassed back about three weeks ago now by SMU at home. And I know Sonny Dykes has got them rolling uh, with Southern Methodist. But they they were up 42 to nothing before USF dressed up the final score with a couple of touchdowns in the second half. Clearly, USF had still got flaws. And yes, they're going on the road here. But that is an interesting spot for the Bulls because they still have some playmakers on both sides of the ball. Their defense played well last week. The only question I would have here, it's what, a two-touchdown line, like 13, 13 and a half, something like that, 14. 14. But the triple option again, we talked about this before with Navy, and and Navy lost the game to Memphis a couple of weeks ago, but since then they've beaten Air Force and they beat the daylights out of who, like Tulsa last week, killed them uh, on the road. So that that concerns me, the triple option. But that's a game that we will probably discuss some on Three Dog Thursday because USF's got a a redshirt freshman quarterback named Jordan McLeod, a local kid who's played well for them uh, in the last two or three games. Uh, in particular last week against BYU. So the, the real question is, can Charlie Strong's defense handle the triple option guy in that one? That's going to be the question. That will absolutely be the question. Now, for one of the bigger games of the weekend, a giant Pac-12 game. And now this, this may decide the Pac-12 South here. Arizona State going to Utah. Utah giving up, what, two touchdowns? 13 and a yeah. half, 14 points? Yeah, I'm seeing 13 and a half. But you, yeah, there's, you can there's probably spots, find 14. Yeah, there's spots you can find 14. Uh, this seems like a t- – this is obviously one of my favorite bets. Um, how, how do you feel about Herm and the boys? Well, you were on them earlier in the year for the win at Michigan State, so I credit you, Gary Seegers, for being on them. And they also have the win at Cal, which was not only a cover but an outright victory. Now getting two touchdowns here – against a Utah team that has been good. And obviously Kyle Whittingham's got them rolling. The only loss is the game at Southern Cal. Uh, They have a couple of easy wins in their last two games. But that's a lot of points. And it might be forks up here. Saturday night game, Pac-12 network. I am am definitely going to take a strong look at the Sun Devils uh, here this one in a a little Pac-12 football action uh, for this matchup. So somebody's got to end up winning that conference before it's all said and done. We think it's going to be Oregon out of the North, but, but Arizona state may be your team and you're right. This game may decide the South and who's in the championship game. Guys. You got that right. Jane Daniels, the quarterback for Arizona state is an absolute stud. Yes. He's a true freshman, but he is a baller, an absolute baller. All right. And as we keep saying, uh, we're not laughing at Herm Edwards anymore. Oh, there were really? some that, that laughed a bunch about that ch- uh, choice as a head coach. Uh, we, we, they're were, what, we were two of them. Five and one? They're four and one or five and one five, right now going into this? Five and one. Five right? and one. Uh, so that that's more than respectable, and they've got a legitimate puncher's chance in that one, my friend. They most certainly do. They went seven and five regular season last year, uh, proved a lot of people wrong, and sitting at five and one right now. That's right. So I love it. I love it. All right. He is TJ Reeves. He joins us every week from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Go get him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, we appreciate you being here, buddy. Came back from the UK just to be on the show this week. Thank you for having me, guys. Absolutely. All right. We appreciate TJ for hopping in here, doing his thing. You know, uh, you know he's got good information. The boy's got good information. All about it. All right. So go check him out, Three Dog Thursday Podcast, on Twitter, at Buck Sideline Guy. You can get us on Twitter, at Winning Cures. I'm at Gary WCE. I'm at Chris B. Giannini. We're also on Facebook. You can find us at winningcureseverything.com. The show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six absolutely incredible sports books. You can find more information on those over at tunicatravel.com. I think that's going to wrap it up. Anything else you can think of? I'm not responsible for any of these picks. Nope. This is entertainment only, my friends. I swear to you, because we have lost enough. Y'all don't need to be losing all this money. But, uh, whew, good gracious. I, I think we're getting off the schneid this week. We're feeling good. I feel feeling real good about that Texas Tech pick now that Gary's just so fired up about it. I'm fired up about Iowa State, man. Let's roll. Let's roll. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.